Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a bunch of different pictures of my daughter who's right there. You can wave, Anthea. And what we're gonna do is take a number of shots of her and we're gonna use this in a project called In the Round. So the first shot I'm gonna do is gonna be from here. Okay, so I, I told Anthea, don't move. I'm gonna move this way and I'm gonna do another shot. And I'm gonna do another shot right here. And I'm gonna do another shot right here. And I'll do another shot right here. Another one right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back to the front. I really, I think I needed to move this way a little bit too. So that one, and that one, and that one. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of shots of my daughter and but the thing about those shots is it's not really in the round I didn't go all the way around I didn't do that so we're gonna go do one more shot of an object where we actually would go all the way around that object so we're gonna say bye to Anthea bye Anthea <laughs> and we're gonna go do this shot now okay so you could see that we could do this work fairly quickly. <laughs> we could do this work fairly quickly. You can go inside. And we're gonna do a picture of a tree. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna go in the round around it. We're gonna go around in a circle. Like we are the numbers on a clock and that tree is in the middle. So. I don't have my grid lines on. I could put them on, but I'm just gonna do my best to keep that centered and running around in a circle. I'm gonna do a bunch of different shots of this tree. Very exciting. And you might be surprised what it's gonna look like at the end. And I kind of like that our background changes quite a bit. The tree's kind of at an angle, so I'm shooting it so it's more straight. I think you can see that. So that was the last one. And what we're gonna do is take all those trees, put them into one photo by using an editing program. We're gonna use photo, I think it's actually pronounced photo P. I'm not sure if I like that, but either way, that's what we're gonna do. Let's see how that works out for us. Okay, so now that we finished shooting our pictures outside, we're gonna edit them. So we're gonna go File, Open, and we're gonna pick, so we went from image 8857, and the very first one was 8847. So I'm gonna pick the 8847, open it up, and it's gonna open it up into a document. Now, I have to bring in all the other pictures that we shot as layers, in this file. So there's a really quick and simple way to do that. So I'm gonna go File, Open, and Place. That means we're gonna open the files and put them into this document. So I knew that I used 8847, so I'll click on 8848, hold my Shift key, and select the top image. Holding the Shift key will select all the images from my original choice to the final choice that I picked. And click Open. And if we watch the layers dialog box on the right hand side, you'll see that all of the, uh, these images get loaded in on the top. It's a wonderful feature. Now, some people would say, oh, you know, should we try to align these images? You might want to, but again, you might not want to. We'll try it. So the way we would do that is we'll select the background layer, hold the shift key, and select the top layer. So you'll see that all of the layers in the layer dialog box are selected. 
And we would go over here to Edit, Auto Align. When we click on this, it looks like nothing is happening, but the program is trying to align the images right now. So it's looking at things that are common. And you can see at the top, it said no similarities found. Okay, so the next step, and the funny thing is I'm just doing the exact same thing I just did, select the background, hold the shift key, and then select the top. All layers are selected. We then go to layer, smart object, convert to smart object. When we convert to smart objects, what it does is it takes all of these layers, compresses it down, puts it behind the scenes, and shows us what looks like only one layer. So from the background all the way to the top 8850 there, we're going to see that it looks like it's just going to be one layer. But really, it's all of those layers hidden in the back. So oh, it says it has to be rasterized first, and we will do that. So now we can see that all of those layers are actually inside this thing called Image 8850. We know that because you can see this bounding box and a little tiny square in the bottom right-hand corner. That means it's a smart object. So we're going to create this in the round effect by going up to Layer, Smart Object, and now this phrase Stack Mode is actually functional. It wasn't when we had all of the individual layers, but now it is. And we're going to go with median. If you think of pages stacked on each other, and if you put your finger on one spot, it's going down all of those pages, so all of those images, and picking the most common color that it's finding. All right. So now we've created this crazy looking image. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to clean it up. So we're going to go up and we're going to say with a levels adjustment layer, we're going to make the whites whiter. So you can see we're brightening that up. We're going to make the blacks blacker and we're going to move our midtones. If you move the midtone to the right, it gets really weird and dark. If you move it to the left, it sort of cleans it up a little more. Don't worry about how it doesn't look too contrasty yet. We're going to fix that. So there it is. So the next step, go back to the adjustment layer, the black and white cookie at the bottom. Let's do a curves adjustment layer. Drop a dot in the middle, bring this up, and you can see now we're increasing the contrast, creating an S curve. And let's move our midtones up a bit. There we go. So we're getting rid of that weird haze that existed. So that's starting to look pretty cool. Let's go back in here and we can do a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now this one's interesting because it actually has all the different colors from the master, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and we can affect each of these individually. So if we were on the master and we looked at saturation, we could make it a total black and white, we could actually increase the saturation overall, or we could just leave this alone and work on the individual colors. So we're gonna start with red, and you can see if we grab red and move the saturation up, there's a few spots that have it. Let's darken this down. Let's go to blues, because we saw a lot of blues moving around. Look at this, see all the blues right there? So we'll clean this up just a bit. We'll have some blues in there. Right in there, that looks pretty good. And how about greens? I really don't know if there's a lot of greens in there. No, it doesn't look to be like there's a lot of greens. So I'll just leave that. It's not really changing anything, so I'm not gonna worry about getting that right back to zero. And let's do yellows. There's a little bit of yellow somewhere in here. Uh, not very much. Okay, so again, not too concerned about where that ends up. Now, if we were to take and put a black and white adjustment layer on this and take the make sure black and white is selected, change the blend mode here from normal all the way down to luminosity. That means we're not affecting color, but we will affect the tones. So check this out. We'll move the greens a little bit. Really, we're gonna see it in the blues. There we go. So if it's blue, we make everything kind of disappear. Oh, I kind of like that. Kind of like that. I don't like how black it is at the bottom, but I definitely like how black the tree is. Let's see a magenta. We can make that pop a little bit. How about the greens, anything? No. 
Yellows, I thought there was a little minor. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I do have an issue. I'm gonna go Command plus, plus, plus. Hold the space bar, drag this up. Click where it says on. And if you look here, this is the properties panel. I'm just closing that. I'm gonna go on the black and white adjustment layer right here. So that's the mask. I'm gonna go on to the mask and it's white. White reveals, black conceals. Select the brush tool. That's the letter B, keyboard shortcut, brush tool. And I'm gonna make sure that the color is black. If you're not sure, hit this little button right there and it'll put white as the foreground, black as the background, and then I'm gonna flip them. Now, on the keyboard, right of the letter P, there are two brackets, the left bracket and the right back bracket. So I'm gonna click on the left bracket and I'm gonna decrease the size of the brush. And I'm just gonna clean this up. Now I've got the opacity set to 41%. Let's take it to 100, take the flow to 100. It's nice and smooth, there we go. So we're just getting rid of the changes that we saw. And I'm not getting rid of it on the tree, but I'm getting rid of it in these other areas. Hold the space bar, click and drag, and I'm just gonna keep moving through this space, clean that up. Space bar, go to this side, clean that up. Gets rid of that black nicely. Now, control zero makes that full frame. So what I'm gonna do now is shift, Option, Command, E. I'm gonna merge everything up. Now, I'll show you the keyboard shortcuts on the screen, so pay attention to those. So a Mac or a PC, PC would be like your Chromebook, how to merge everything up. Once we get everything merged up here, we're gonna go Filter, Other, High Pass. Now the trick with the High Pass filter is not to make it so that, and I'll zoom in, Command or Control Plus, is not to make it look all choppy like this, but it's sort of to just find the edges. That looks pretty good, actually. Oh, that's a little too much. Let me just bring this down to about two. 200. Okay, there we go, two. Let me hit okay. And we change the blend mode of this adjustment layer to, and it, when I call it an adjustment layer, it's through a filter, but I'm adjusting the overall look of the image, either overlay, soft light, or hard light. We'll start with overlay. Does a nice job of sharpening things. Soft light, hard light. So I think on this one, soft light, control zero. And I'll come back over the image. Let me pick the move tool, come over the image, click once, control zero. I think that looks pretty darn good. That helps sharpen it and then it's clean. Now, the only other issue that I have is beside the tree, it looks a little bit dark in here. So I'm gonna do one more adjustment layer on top of everything and it will be a curve, oh no, a level. Let's do another levels adjustment layer. Mid-tones, let's drag that to the right left. And you can see that we're getting rid of that craziness that's around it, but I don't wanna get rid of everything that I just got rid of. So I'm gonna to go to the mask, white reveals, black conceals, make sure my foreground is black and it is. Grab my brush tool, which I have, make the brush bigger and we'll just paint this back in. So that's looking good. And now with the tree, I'm just gonna go up the center of the tree and try and avoid the edges. Okay, to me that looks way better, way better. Now, I'm gonna export this. So I'm gonna go to File, Export as, JPEG. Now, the important thing is, you can see when I click here, that takes the link off between the width and the height. You wanna keep that on. So this is the width and height that I asked the image to be saved out as last time, so it's not really uh, the original image. So what I'm going to do is say I want it as a JPEG and I want the maximum width of the image to be 1200 pixels. And when I click the tab key, you can see that the height has also changed so it's reflective of the proper ratio that we need. And I'm going to click Save. 
Now it saves to my download folder. So I click here and say show in Finder. This is where it is. You're gonna to wanna to move this image into your Google Drive. So this is what you're gonna hand in. I'm gonna show you a speed version of me working on the picture of Anthea. And then I'm gonna show you the final steps that I would do to make her face show up in a process where we actually don't uh, do the smart object for all of our images. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the image of my daughter. So we're gonna to go to open and we're gonna select from image 835 all the way to image 8, 8, well, 843. I'm going to pick the bottom one right there and click open. You can't select them all in one step. You have to do this in two steps. So we have our base image. Now we go file, open and place. Select the rest of the images. There's the top one. Hold the shift key and select all of them except the base image, which we already brought in and click open. They're all going to get positioned properly above the original image. And again, if you try to align these, they won't align because there is nothing similar in the images themselves. Once all the images are in here, I'll just click the checkbox. I don't know if that will change anything. Nope. And now what I'm going to do is select all the images. So remember, you select the top one, hold the shift key, select the bottom image, and they're all highlighted. A layer, a smart object, convert to smart object. So click on that. Now that they're all converted to smart object, we go to layer, smart object, stack mode, median. It might ask us to, or tell us that we have to rasterize our images before the final result will take place. Just hit okay if that happens again. Ah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so one of the problems that we have with this is we really don't know that it's a person, we kind of get the idea that it is. So if we zoom in and we click and drag, you can see there's a bit of a face there, but we're going to fix that up a little more. And I think we'll do that right now. So we'll go file, open and place. And we're going to bring in an image where she's looking right at the camera. This one right here. So 8841 is going to come back in. And we're going to reduce the opacity of this layer significantly to start with. So that looks pretty good to me. And we're going to put a mask on it. So down here, we click this button. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill. Actually, let's leave that at 100%. But we're going to click on that mask and go Edit, Fill. And we're going to fill with black. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So I know that there's a face in here. So make sure you're on the mask. We're going to paint with white. So we swap the colors. We make sure we're on a brush. And right now we're at 100, 100, 100 at the top. And we're going to click once. And there's the face. So I actually want less of the face showing. I want the eyes to show, but I really don't need to see the whole face. So I'm going to use the bracket keys that are found on the right-hand side of the letter P, make the brush smaller, flip the colors back to black, and I might change the opacity down to about 66 is fine, and click on the cheeks, and just sort of roll through that, make the brush smaller, click around, different parts of the face. I want lots to show through, but I don't want to really touch the nose, uh, maybe just a little bit of the nose. I'll drop the opacity down to about 13% and I'll just tap once over the nose. There we go. Once on the lips, control or command minus. And you can see the face looks pretty good there. We can actually see features of the face. So that's good. Control or command zero. And on this one, we will do a hue saturation adjustment layer. And we can actually look at all the colors actually let me just delete that. So now that we're at this stage, what we could do is use a black and white adjustment layer in luminosity mode. 
So we're able to affect the intensity of the colors. Let's see what we got here. There we go. By using luminosity values. There we go. And there's the face. Keep that a little bit brighter. I don't know how much yellow is in there. A little bit. Should be some red. I know that the hat and the head have magenta. Let's see, how about greens? We should, there's a lot of yellow in the branches in the back, but that's not really coming through. We're seeing that more here with the blues. Okay, so I'm gonna try and kill some of that blue, not too much, I think right there. Now I'll click on the adjustment layer at the bottom again, and I'm gonna do a curves adjustment layer. So I'm gonna open up the middles a bit, open up the highlights a bit, drag the shadows down just a little bit, there's my midtones. I don't want to lose too much detail there, so I kind of like that. I do want to clean up the base so that it's white. I'm going to show you a trick with that. So I'm going to make another adjustment layer above this. So click on this, and we're going to do a black and white adjustment layer. In normal mode, let's bring those values up. I'm just looking at the snow. There we go. So I've got the snow. Should be some with the blues too. Let's see. Yeah, that actually works out really well. Let me see anything in the magentas. Not really, just in the hat. But look at the snow. We can actually play with that. Okay, I'm going to change the blend mode. Let's look at color the blend mode of this one. So we're able to maintain, so go to the mask and fill that with black. Use a brush, paint with white. Use the bracket keys to change the size of the brush. And you can see we're pulling out the color hue. There, it's cleaning that up. Let's bring that opacity to 100. Let's make sure our brush is at zero for hardness. Yep. Let's try this again. All right, I'm going to show you one more trick because you can see, like, it doesn't look right. It's too warm. It's not that it's disappearing. It's just too warm. So what we can do, you select the layer itself, grab the opacity of the layer, drag it all the way to zero, and then slowly bring it up until it matches. So that's too warm. So I bring it all the way down, then I start moving it up until the color starts to disappear. There we go. So I'd say about 12% looks good, 15%. Click somewhere else, and I think we are done with our image. Um, but just before, I'm going to sharpen this image a little bit more. So I need to do a filter, but I need to do a filter on a merged up image. So shift, option, command, E, and it merges everything up to a new layer, and I go filter. Now check this out, last filter. So the last time we used any of these filters, it was other and high pass. So if I click this, it's gonna give me the last filter that we did. Same numbers, everything. And I'll change that to overlay, and I'll turn that layer off and on. And you can see, if we zoom in, that it is sharper, much sharper. Let's try hard light. Control zero, or command zero, make sure you're in the layer. Whoops. Let's back up on that. Brush tool, there we go. So here's our history panel. So I screwed up and now I fixed it. And now we're going to export that file, export as JPEG. And here's the values that we had last time. And we click Save, and it is now saved to my downloads. And that is what I'm going to hand in. All right, enjoy the work. I'm excited to see the two different in-the-round images that you create.